So you said an elevated A1C is a shotgun pointed at your heart and an elevated LDL might be a BB gun. Yeah, you pointed, at your, pointed at your arm. And so <clears throat> I've, actually, I've actually evolved even further since then. I now, uh, the more I look at the, the LDL research, I don't think it's any risk factor whatsoever. I think elevated total cholesterol and elevated LDL is not in any way dangerous. I don't think it increases your risk of heart attack and stroke at all. Uh, it may be elevated because of inflation, inflammation in your body, and, and that's your body's attempt to kind of spackle the damage being done in your arteries with cholesterol. But your your body makes cholesterol, and that was one of the one of the very early things when I went back because I had to pull out my physiology and biochemistry textbooks because we, we get all that in the first year or two of medical practice, but then you basically never talk about the basic sciences again. And when I went back and looked, I'm like, wait a minute, our body makes 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol a day, and your brain actually has its own independent cholesterol manufacturing process. And I'm like, why would we make something if it's just pure poison like we're taught as physicians? And that, that moved me even further. But yeah, I think at the, there's no doubt that an elevated A1C, even if it's one-tenth of a point high, above the reference range, an elevated triglyceride level, a low HDL level, I think those three markers are 1,000 times more important than an elevated LDL. And so, yeah, at, at, at the worst case scenario, the LDL might be a BB gun pointed at your leg, but an elevated A1C, an elevated triglyceride, and a low HDL, that's a shotgun aimed straight at your heart. And so I think so many doctors, we, we forget about proportionality. It's like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, riding on a tricycle in your lawn, that may be a little risk for you might fall and break a collarbone or something. But riding a motorcycle 145 miles an hour on a busy interstate with no helmet, that's a huge risk factor for trauma. And that's how I kind of liken these labs, you know, if, if, you're, if your A1C is high and your triglycerides are high and your HDL is low, you're riding 145 miles an hour on a, a shaky motorbike with no helmet. That's how dangerous that is. But if, you're, if your LDL is high and your other numbers are beautiful, you might be on a tricycle in, in your lawn. You might, you know, you might break a nail if you fall over. That's the relative risk of those two different metabolic panels. This is a lot of fun. You, you're really good at what you do. I, I love that, that story. <clears throat> and, and last I heard is your total cholesterol was 350, hovering yep. around 350. Your LDL was yep. 250. Now, yep. somebody might hear that and say, Dr. Berry, your, your heart's going to explode. What, what's going on, dude? Why are you not concerned? And, I, and I, would, I would, my answer would be my favorite question since I was old enough to talk is why? Show me the research. Let me, let me see what you're basing that on. Uh, because I also know that my A1C is in the low fives and my HDL is above 60, and my triglycerides are below 70. And so I have no fear for my heart. Uh, I've got a little free time now that we had the, you know, the disastrous clinic fire. And so I'm going to get my CAC and my CIMT and a carotid Doppler check, and I'm going to post those on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe my arteries are all clogged up. We'll see. When I, when I post those tests, but I suspect that my arteries are going to be pretty darn squeak, squeaky clean because I've been doing keto now for about five years. And uh, that's another thing I try to always do is be completely transparent. If I, if I, I've posted my labs numerous times on my Facebook page, I've talked about my labs all over the place and I want people to understand I'm, I've got a total cholesterol right now of 350. And I tell people all the time, if your doctor freaks out because your total cholesterol is high, your doctor's at least a decade behind in his or her reading because total cholesterol has been known by all the powers to be to be meaningless for at least a decade. Now, there are still doctors practicing, you know, where the rubber meets the road who don't know that. They, they're still concerned about that. But total cholesterol is a non-issue when it comes to heart disease. Now, and so some doctors, if, if they're saying, oh, your LDL's high, you need a statin, they're maybe only three to five years behind on their reading. So that's a little better doctor, but you may know this, Ben, All the, the American Heart Association, the AHA slash ACC, their cardiac risk calculator has a box for LDL, but the LDL is not even used in the calculation 
of your cardiac risk, your 10-year heart attack risk. It's not even used in the calculation. They use the triglycerides and the HDL. That's what they use in the calculation. And anybody can go to the American Heart Association's calculator, plug in all your numbers, and then change the LDL, make it higher, make it lower. And you'll notice that your 10-year risk doesn't change at all. And Ivor Cummings, he's a great resource, and he's the guy who discovered this because he was playing with their calculator because he's an engineer, and engineers play with calculators. That's what they do. And he's like, what the hell, Ken? He's like, I put in an LDL of, of 80, and I put in an LDL of 180, and my 10-year risk doesn't change at all. Wow. They're not even using the LDL in the calculation. So the American Heart Association is well aware that LDL plays no meaningful role in your 10-year heart attack risk. They know that, that, and they made their calculator to reflect that. But my question becomes then, why are they not talking about that out loud? Why are they letting people spend billions of dollars on all these stupid statins when they don't need them at all? They're not, they're, even if you lowered their LDL to 40, you're not changing their 10-year cardiac risk at all based on the AHA's actual calculator that's on their website. So why are we prescribing statins or the even more dangerous newer generation of drugs that are injectable that lower your LDL precipitously? Why are we doing that if it doesn't change someone's 10-year cardiac risk? So what's the answer? Why, why are they doing that? I think because they, they, their paradigm has not been shifted by you or I yet. We haven't happened to them yet, but we are slowly but surely. I just did a book signing uh, in, uh, where was that at? In uh, Little Rock. And there were two doctors and three nurse practitioners at the book signing who are, who are woke. They know now. Their, their paradigm has been shifted. They've hear, heard the bell ring, and they no longer talk about this stupid crap anymore. But there are so many doctors out there. They only listen to the American Heart Association, who's basically sold out to big food and big pharma. They're currently owned by them. And so they're, they're stepping away from the total cholesterol myth and the LDL myth, but they're doing it very, very slowly because obviously they don't want to piss off their, their big sponsors, the people who write checks with five or six zeros uh, for donations to the AHA. They don't want to piss those people off. And so they're, they're, there's never going to be a press conference where the American Heart Association says, stop worrying about total cholesterol. It's not a risk at all. Mm -hmm. And stop worrying about LDL because we don't even use that to calculate your 10-year risk for heart attack and, and stroke. We don't even use that. So it's, it's dumb for you to be paying a copay every month of your life and taking these drugs that make you feel miserable. And, pro and these drugs also probably raise your risk of dying from all causes. Because, you know, in the end, the people that listen to your podcast and, 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 you know, like things on my Instagram, they don't, they don't care what they die of. They just don't want to die. And so if I'm putting you on a medicine that might theoretically lower your risk of dying of a heart attack, but at the same time, I'm increasing your risk of dying of cancer. Is that a, is that a, I mean, did I do you any service? Did I do you any, any favor? I don't think so. I just don't want to die period. And so I think that, eating a proper human diet and not taking dangerous prescription medications is the way for you to have the longest lifespan and the longest health span. And those are my goals. I don't care what your damn LDL is. I just want you to live a long, damn healthy life. When you're in your 70s and 80s, I want you out in the yard kicking the soccer ball around with your grandkids and your great grandkids. That's my goal for you, not, not to get a certain lab number that, that has equivocal evidence at best to support it. Amen. Amen to that. I always say that we, we're not dying, we're killing ourselves. And it's just happening, happening so slowly that it's just not being classified as a suicide. Yes. But in, in reality, it's, yeah. it is. It's happening so slowly that we can't classify it as a suicide or a homicide. Mm. But I think both of those things are happening every single day in our loved ones and in our friends. And I don't, I don't suspect that any of the large powers that be will ever hold that press conference on CNN and Fox News and say, hey, we've been killing people for the last 50 years. Stop taking our advice. That's never going to happen. And that's why it occurred to me that Nisha was right. Social media is the answer because I can reach thousands or tens of thousands of people and say, hey, stop poisoning yourself and stop letting your doctor poison you. We are a, a known mammalian species, and our species has to have certain nutrition. The human species thrives on certain diets, and the, the human species suffers and gets weak and sick on other diets. 
So I decided to use my social media to reach thousands of people, even tens of thousands of people and say, stop committing slow suicide. And then also stop allowing your doctor to commit slow homicide, because Mm -hmm. that's basically what's happening on a daily basis for all the people who are on statins and who are on uh, type two diabetic medications that work by raising your insulin. That's how the medicine works. And we, we now know that a, a high blood sugar is very, very bad for you and very dangerous. But we also know that chronically elevated insulin levels are also very bad for you and very dangerous. And so that's why I decided, yeah, I'm going to go against the powers that be because they're never going to admit that they were wrong. They're just going to slowly back away from this. But there are people dying every day, Ben. We're losing fathers and, and mothers and grandparents, and we're losing brothers and sisters that we didn't have to lose. They're dying for no reason. They're dying or belief of a false paradigm. And I can't, I can't stomach that. I can't sit idly by while that happens. I've got to be as loud and as obnoxious and as broad spread as I can possibly be to try to save as many of these people as possible.